please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Electra movie thoughts. So early on, when Electra meets the milliners, you know, first she meets Abby and, you know, the... I think it's the second time she meets her. They have the, you know, they, they exchange a few words and eventually Abby gets, you know, Abby says, you know, by the way, my name's Abby and Electra responds, you know, I'm Electra. At that exact point, I secretly hope that she continues the tradition that you know, as she did in Daredevil, by beating the crap out of people who, you know, ask about her name. And I, I, I would have no qualms seeing Garner take on this 13-year-old girl, even without knowing that she could fight back. Yes, she's, she's just that obnoxious, you know. And then a little later, when Abby tells her father her name's Electra, Part of me is thinking, you know, Electra's, you know, mentally going through, you know, oh, crap, now I have to beat him up for, you know, sort of, you know, retroactively, I don't know if that's even the correct term, but, you know, he already knows my name, I beat people up when they ask me my name, I, and now I have to beat him up, this is going to take all night if I have to beat both of them up, and this, wow, this is, this is going to eat up my whole weekend, you know. The, the editing on the scene with the, the compact bow, or what it's called, you know, where she's about to kill, you know, them, and she, she doesn't, and it keeps cutting back to and showing dramatically the, you know, the, the snapshots of them and saying, you know, age and gender and terminate and all this stuff. I don't know, shouldn't that be, like, you know, cutting to... Her thinking about, but you know, I, I actually sort of like these people. They're, you know, I'm I'm get, I'm bonding with them, you know. In, instead of just, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It just I, I don't really. I, I I guess it sort of conveys that she feels bad about it, but yeah. Gotta love how Stick actually uses his ninja powers to gain an advantage in billiard. That just, that, that is a certain kind of, do, do they teach that at ninja school? Isn't that good? Doesn't that go against some kind of code? You know, it's, you know, one, one thing is, you know, I mean, he's already hustling the guy because he's blind, and obviously he can still actually play Billy or other. Then again, I guess you kind of do ask for it if you actually, you know, participate in a sport for money against a blind guy. But, yeah, never mind. I love the overdramatic leap that Elektra does when killing that first ninja, you know, he's like up on the roof. And she just does this, you know, with the, with the sigh and raises her leg and her knee and jumps up. I think she even screams, but I, I forget, and just stabs him and he explodes in, you know, yellow smoke. Yeah. The, you know, in, right after when she fights the one armed with the fully automatic weapon, Daredevil ripped off Spider-Man and the Matrix, and then Elektra again rips off, you know, Spider-Man and the Matrix in this dodging sequence. It's just, wow, guys, if, if you just really are that out of ideas, you really may just want to consider not doing these movies until you have some more ideas, you know. 
I find it astonishing that they managed to make the hand so freaking boring in this movie. I mean, it's a ninja clan. I mean, when when you read about them in the comics, they're actually seriously badass. They, you know, I mean, just you know, even just finding out, oh, the guys who were behind this other hand, you're like, oh man, you know, and in this, they just. Yeah, they, they, you know, first they send out two assassins because Elektra didn't get the job done. Hold on, I think I actually just discovered a plot hole. It's not, it's, it's Stick who sends Elektra to kill the, you know, the treasure as they call her, Abby. And then he has her wait for a few days so that she can bond with, you know, the obnoxious excuse me, Abby, and, yeah. And then, you know, just after Electra says she isn't going to do it, then, you know, the, the guy over the phone is all like, you know, you know the, her, her agent, because, you know, assassins have agents. The, the, the guy who asks her if she's even gotten laid any time recently, you know, she, she doesn't answer him, Personally, I like to think that she is just thinking it's going to be too difficult to explain because basically the answer depends on which cut of Daredevil you watched, you know, so it's, 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 it's complicated, is all I'm saying. The agent guy, he says, you know, you know they're just going to send someone else to kill them, and then just about immediately these, you know, ninjas are here, and the ninjas, as we find out, were sent by the hand, so why did the hand just suddenly discover what did stick and his guys leak the information about the treasure so that Electro would have to defend them, or... Yeah, that, that's kind of a jerk thing to do, but if, if that is, and otherwise I don't completely see how it would go together, you know. Maybe they had a, like, rock-paper-scissors contest about who would get, you know, first attempt at getting the treasure, but... I don't think they're quite that honorable. The leader of the hand, is that actually the guy from, the, what was it, Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat? He looks a lot like him. I, I don't quite, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, you know, first they send these two ineffectual ninjas, and then they send these four, I think it's four, guys who have powers, and again, that's, that's it, you know. And, you know, he even has the line, the, the leader guy, the war is over. If it's a war, why don't they have more? Why don't they just dispatch some more men? Why? Why did they only send these four guys? You know, especially when they when they're dispatched so easily. I have to talk about Stone's death because it is just so unbelievably. I, he didn't even need to be in the movie. If they were going to kill him off within minutes of introducing him, why was he in the movie at all? Why have someone with magical powers even introduced... Just, he barely even gets you know, a mention of the name. I love how the, the leader guy actually says all three names, just so we have a name to attach to each of their faces. If they didn't have that scene, Stone's name would never be mentioned. And that actually... I think it's just for, the, for his benefit, actually, because... The other two are named later. I think, well, I'm not sure Typhoid was referred to, but at least Tattoo was, you know. But, but anyway, yeah, he's like, you know, Stone, Tattoo, Typhoid, go out there. Why doesn't he just say, all of you, go out there? You know, is this, that, that just, <laughs> would they not feel as special if they didn't get a mention by name? You know, would, would at least one of them be standing like, have a name, you know, it's just, it's rude. Anyway, yeah, not only does he get killed immediately, who actually kills him? Himself! Electra does nothing. Electra dodges the whatever it was he threw. It breaks the tree, the tree falls on him. There's a, I, I think there is a special term for that kind of stupid, but I can't quite think of it. I'm just so flabbergasted. Who puts that in a movie? Who has their one of their villains kill themselves? 
with the like one of the only attacks that they even do, you know, no wonder that other hand guy says, you know, oh, you're what is it? You're an abomination. Well, yeah, if 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 you kill yourself with one of your only attacks, I I can kind of understand why you're hated. You know that that makes a bit of sense. Literally, he just. You know, Electra sneaks up behind him with the, you know, and stabs him. Oh, that didn't work because it broke against. And then he throws the thing, which she. I love how she doesn't just duck and roll out of the way of the tree. No, she runs away from something being thrown at her, or she could just run off to the side. Something. She runs away and then you know goes up the tree. You know, I just. I don't know, maybe she's part cat or something. And yeah, she's just walking on the, the tree log as it's falling over and it collapses onto him. Goodbye, Stone, we hardly knew you, and apparently you were just unbelievably stupid. And Tattoo, he has that really obvious, you know, vulnerability where the moment that he uses his tattoos, he can't move. He can't fight off people. You know what I would personally do in that kind of situation? Make sure someone is next to him. Make sure that someone is defending him. It, you know, this is not rocket science, people. You have the guy with two katanas. You know, plop him next to it. He heck, you can even hide him. You can make it a trap. It's like they don't even know that they're going up against Electra. I thought she had like a name. She was a legend, a myth. People are like terrified of her. She, you know, she'll like be all up close behind you and whisper in your ear right before you die. And then she's like, you know, ten feet behind you and she'll throw a sign to your back. And that's like, you know, obviously impossible. But I guess she just like, I don't know, teleports or projects part of herself. One of the funniest parts is actually, I think it's supposed to be serious when she and the katana guy have a telepathic conversation and it's just like the most natural thing in the world. You know, like I said in the review, they take it way too seriously. They're not having any fun with this. It's just, yeah, just so comical. Yeah, I, I literally think that pretty much any other way the two would have contacted each other, you know, say a, you know, he, he teleported a cell phone in, in front of her or something, and it rings and she picks it up, and then they have a conversation. That would probably have been less silly. And typhoid? Why does she always walk? She just never runs. What, that shot of her walking and holding out her arms because she really likes the feel of killing plant life around her, you're chasing people. Honey, do you understand what a chase means? It kind of involves fast movement. The people you are chasing are running. Do you think they're just gonna stop and wait? They, they already have a head start. It's it, ridiculous. You know, it's... Yeah, I mean, Tattoo kind of does the smart... Well, not kind of, he does the smart thing. He, you know, plops himself down and says, you know what? I'm going to send my tattoos after him, you know what, I, I, I want to sit here, I want to chill. I'm going to send these flying wolf things after them, you know. And also just, how does he suddenly have, you know, I, I didn't pay enough attention, I'll admit, to see, to, to determine if he actually did have all the tattoos that they have him use, you know, he, he's got like a bird, and he has this, at first, it really, it seriously looked like, looks like a bear, like a big grizzly, I'm thinking. And then there's suddenly a wolf, I guess. Maybe he had the snakes on his back, I don't know. But anyway, in that last scene, he just sends, well, in his last scene, anyway, he sends so many snakes after Abby, you know, and you gotta be really impressed with either how good she is at apparently fending off snakes, or... How ineffective these snakes are because he's literally burying her in snakes. One of them's like over her mouth or something, and it doesn't really do anything. I mean, the moment that he's dead, they all disappear, and Abby's just, you know, I mean, she's like 
up and walking within moments. It it's literally did nothing, you know, nothing whatsoever. He also does not explode in yellow smoke, which I don't know, but it's 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 there. I I noticed it. But but yeah, you know, suddenly he just sends I don't know a hundred snakes or something. And I'm just thinking if he can send that many. I'm pretty sure he only has the one wolf tattoo, so why does he only send two wolves? And how is he suddenly there next to them, actually, now that I think about it? Because he supposedly couldn't move when he sends, or maybe that's just when he sends as many as he does with the snakes, I don't know. But then why does he send that many snakes? Why doesn't he just send a few snakes and then actually get up and walk? He, he could, you know, corner them. In fact, why do these people have no... No, no hint of just strategy. You know, it's not like they. There's. It starts out with four of them up against three people, only one of whom they think can actually fight. You know, they don't know about Abby, so corner them. You know, it's it's not a complex. Well, well, I don't know if it's considered a complex concept, but seriously, these are supposed to be killers. You know. Or maybe the, the agent guy's right, maybe they are circus freaks. That would actually make a lot of sense, considering just how freakishly ineffective they are. You know, I think that we, it, the movie would have really benefited from just a few... You know, if there had been some people that they could kill that would kind of show, you know, these guys aren't completely useless, you know. Well, it's it's pretty obvious to have the katana guy be the guy who killed Electra's mother. You know, it's just yeah, and and it doesn't particularly yeah. It's it's just really unoriginal, and I didn't feel any sense of vindication when she when she killed him. You know. I love how the fight between dual katanas and Elektra is basically a, a, a game of peekaboo. You know, he, he has all these floaty curtains dancing around doing doing air ballet and every so often He'll be behind one of them, and he'll attack her a few for a few seconds, and then go away again. You know, it's 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 a, it's a game of peekaboo, only with you know, swords and size involved. How many times does Electra manage to die and get resurrected? I mean, I guess technically we can't count the one where you know it's the the, the one that they. You know, used at the start of the movie with her, like, you know, that's not so bad, I died once, you know. Okay, so technically that happened in the past, that happened before this movie, but later she gets, like, you know, typhoid married. Yeah, obviously. And she just comes right back out of it, and then, well, maybe I should say how many times do female fighters in this movie on the side of good die, you know, and Abby also dies because of... Wait, what was it? Was that typhoid? I don't remember exactly. You know, typhoid is like the only of them who actually has any kind of success rate in this movie. You know, everyone else just, especially Stone, seriously suck. But, yeah, you know, and suddenly Electra can heal because, oh, she has a pure heart. You know, in, in this battle of good and evil, which... I, I personally really appreciate that we've downgraded the overall conflict to, you know, I asked, what, what was with all those shades of grey and Daredevil? Come on, we, we need a good black and white, good versus evil, and yeah. The, I mean, what, what was that even supposed to be, you know, he's like, oh, I never finished my training, it's, it's all Jedi and crap with, you know, the moment that she... Actually, yeah, what what was it that made her now have completed her training? She's not angry anymore, she 
she cares about these two people? Is that it? Is it that you know she managed to care about why? Well, to, to be care, to, to be fair, it is it is quite a feat to care about those two characters. I, I have not been able to bring myself to it, so. And actually, even if I did get the power of life and death, I still don't think I could actually bring myself to care about them. That, yeah, I, I just, the, you know, the state can keep that. I, um, I don't have that kind of, no, can't bring myself to it. This actually does give Elektra the costume of the comics, pretty much, you know, it's not, not entirely, I think, you know, I think she, I, I think she actually wears a skirt, a short skirt in the comics instead of pants, but I can kind of understand why they, excuse me, made that change. And they did, excuse me, cut her bandana, which might be for the best. But, you know, she doesn't actually wear the the outfit for very much of the movie at all. She, like, you know, strips down to it at the end of the movie, and she's wearing it when she kills that guy at the beginning of the movie. But, you know, that's it. I suppose that more or less does it. Yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.